Hello you metal pilgrims and welcome to yet another episode of our interview series. Today we go full scale thrash metal with our guest Chris Waltram of the Swedish metal band Warfact. Chris will be introducing Warfact, speaking about the band's upcoming new album and what thrash metal is today and of course much much more. But as always, before we start, I'd like to take a moment and invite you to join the conversation and subscribe to Metal Pilgrim community on YouTube, Instagram, or any other social media you hang out at to be able to submit your questions for all future guests. Uh, stay tuned with the updates and for more exclusive rock and metal content. Here you go! Hi, Chris! Uh... Thanks a lot for joining me today. How's it going, man? Thank you very much for having me. It's it's uh, it's going great. Yeah, that's good. Um, are you are you actually in uh, in Sweden at the moment? Yes, I am. Yeah. Uh, oh, how are things there? I I just spoke to uh, Nicholas of Catatonia yesterday. He's also from Sweden, so I know that there is no you know lockdown or anything like that. But how are you and the band coping with the quarantine and everything? Yeah, we have no no lockdown, but we have new recommendations since a week a week back. So we're not supposed to to uh, be in crowds. We uh, are not supposed to to use public uh, transfer or uh, and communications. And uh, actually, it says we should only be hanging out with the family if needed, um, mm -hmm. or if if it's possible, and then go go shopping if if we need to. Mm -hmm. But uh, obviously, that's hard to. To do so, we still we still go to work and stuff, uh, but we shouldn't have big parties and and uh, uh, and uh, go to crowded places. So so it's it's uh, really boring because we actually plan to host uh, the release show mm -hmm. for the new, uh, which is going to be released on November the thirteenth, and we were going to host a, a release show where we were going to play live mm -hmm. as well. So the, the the plan was to to host a limited uh, event yeah. with uh, 50 people, but uh, now it seems we have to cancel it uh, since those new uh, recommendations. So that's uh, that's awful. Yeah. We were li really looking forward to it, and so was uh, uh, the people who who uh, were invited. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, that's very unfortunate. This is very unfortunate, uh, yet we're all in the same boat, the entire humanity kind of, uh, right now. And I guess we just all have to do our part to get this over with uh, the sooner we can uh, and get back to yeah. normal lives and have not limited, but hopefully, you know, the full scale shows very and very soon. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So I hope so. So yeah, as you said, uh, Warfact uh, is actually a, about to release its fourth studio album, Spectre of Devastation, on uh, um, November thirteenth via Napalm Records. So congrats on this one, man! I know how hard it is to you know release an album, prepare it all during the pandemic's time. So congrats, man! Um, could you actually speak just a little bit about the creative process behind the album and what were, you know what the fans should expect of it? overall so we started writing these songs uh, a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, so there was a big gap between the, the this one and the last album scavengers which came out in 2016 so so four years are a little too long and we'll try to keep that uh shorter uh the next time yeah uh, that's <laughs> for sure but the, the the creative process was uh very much like the, the one for scavengers but we have evolved as musicians and as music creators and writers. So, so the process is more routine based and more effective, uh, efficient uh, now and for this this new album. But it usually uh, works out that Friedrich, who writes uh, almost all the music, is mm -hmm. is uh, sending us a song digitally mm -hmm. uh, with multiple guitars and drums. Uh, computer drums and then we we uh, listen to it and then we bring the song uh, to the next rehearsal mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, and then start to change uh, bits and uh, move things around remove things add things and uh, finalizing the song mm -hmm. and if we have a lyric uh, which i'm um, writing mm -hmm. then they play around with the lyrics and uh, try to to 
create like uh, an interesting and good uh, chorus because that's very important you feel uh, and uh, then we keep on working uh, on the song on rehearsals as well as really uh, doing some some stuff in his home studio when we're not rehearsing and then bringing the new ideas and we, we change up things until we're satisfied but uh, it's not unusual. We do the the, uh, the last thing, or actually last minute changes uh, in the studio while recording the album, mm -hmm. and uh, that's true for this album as well. So, so uh, when you when you uh, the day you're going to record your instrument, uh, some things uh, might have changed. Absolutely. <laughs> so, but wait to the better. Uh, so it's it's. Uh, it's very cool, man. Um, I was actually able to listen to the album uh, just a bit earlier than everyone else did, you know, and I, one thing that I gotta say is it is definitely a no compromise thrash metal right piece, right? It's very coherent, it's vigorous, uh, and it's very aggressive from the very first to the very last track. So I, I personally enjoy it. I'm a, I'm a huge thrash metal fan, so I mean, this is something I definitely enjoy and uh, for all of the thrash metal heads out there, this is definitely one album to check out this year. Um, so, but this sound, uh, has it been, you know, done deliberately to cement your place in a thrash metal genre, or did it just came out like this? Well, when we started to, to uh, when we released the first album, uh, the, the, the Macabre in, in 2009, mm -hmm. uh, had a totally different sound. It was uh, a B-tuned, uh, clean vocals album, and the music, uh, it doesn't sound anything like the following albums. Mm -hmm. So you could say we cut our sound uh, on the uh, Exoneration Denied album, which we released in, in 2013. Mm -hmm. uh, so that when we hit the Warfect sound and we felt that this is really, uh, this is really our sound. This is what we're going to continue with. And in that Spain, we we we, we uh, continued writing songs, uh, which ended up in a scavengers in 2016, and now suspect of devastation, uh, in the same vein. So so, we we write music that we like, and uh, we're obviously uh, inspired by the stuff we listen to when we grew, were growing up, which is like thrash metal from late 80s to to early 90s, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well as. Me and Fredrik uh, having our roots in black metal, so we bring in that influence as well. Yeah, make um, a little twist uh, to the music, not to do to do the the old school thrash metal all over again, so to speak. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. Um, and uh, you mentioned that you are in charge of the lyrics, right, uh, on the uh, on the album. So. Are there any general lyrical themes that are running through the songs? And, uh, you know, what, again, what is it about? Well, I write about things that I find interesting, and it's usually about historical events. So, so mm -hmm. almost all the lyrics I write is about uh, an event that's, that has actually happened mm -hmm. some, uh, historically. So... Uh, it might be like like the Black Death, the plague, uh, medieval era, mm -hmm. uh, but also like on this album we have the the into the phrase about the uh, the Kursk uh, submarine accident. Mm -hmm. uh, so we so I'm not always writing about old stuff. It's also new stuff, but usually a lot of a lot of people dies in my lyrics. That's probably the common theme. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, <laughs> but yeah. Um, Thanks, thanks for sharing, man. Um, and while this is your fourth studio album, right? It is actually your first one with Napalm Records, uh, if I'm not mistaken, right? So how is it working with the label? Was it any different from the stuff you've been doing before? Uh, yeah, I would say it's very different uh, yeah. from before. And it's, it feels great to work with such a prominent label as Napalm Records. And when we signed, we felt that this is uh, really perfect home for us because mm -hmm. now we have the platform to 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 uh, reach a broader audience, to, to reach more people, to do more stuff, so to speak, and, and you know, to be heard, like to be lifted from the underground mm -hmm. up uh, to more people. And uh, it feels great working with Napalm. They're, they're great. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yet still, you guys, you know, released an album during the pandemics uh, all over the world, right? So you're not able to 
do the regular promo routine, right? I mean, it is quite different. It's almost everything is going to digital at this uh, at this moment. Uh, but do you actually have any plans, uh, or at least hopes and dreams, <laughs> to 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 promote this album, you know, with a with a show, or if not, at least an online shows in the future? Well, since since the the release party won't happen, and yeah. uh, that release show won't won't be happening. Uh, we are thinking of doing some some kind of uh, streaming event, okay. uh, not not in not in a direct connection with the release, because now we we, we plan the the actual live show, uh, which won't happen. So it will probably take place uh, next year. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll try to do live streams, and uh, we'll also try to to like film uh, a live show. For a show without audience, uh, multicam, and maybe edit that and release it afterwards, uh, just to to change things from from uh, the regular live stream stuff. Uh, and uh, I certainly hope we can be able to play live sometime next year. At least. So, so I definitely hope they they can find a vaccine for this virus Absolutely. soon. So we have a few few confirmed dates, but. Nothing we can, uh, nothing we can tell anybody about yet because we don't know. So, so they might be postponed as well. Unfortunately, this is true. But uh, again, as we were talking about it before, right? Everyone is in the same boat, and uh, uh, and I really do hope that you uh, will be able to hit the road soon, and you will make it. You know, either either you make it to Ukraine, or I'll catch you somewhere else in Europe uh, next time you guys actually go uh, go and tour. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, so I, another question though. I I gotta say that the rhythm section work on the on this uh, record is quite extraordinary. This is definitely a highlight for me, right? It is very stable and consistent. Um, it is, um, you know, it is it is it is strong. It is vigorous, yet it is not linear. I mean, this is this is something that I person I picked up and enjoyed on this particular album. So how much um, how much do you involve Mane is the name of the drummer, right? Um, in the songwriting process and how do you, I mean you being a bass player in addition to being a vocalist, how do you cooperate with him on uh, on developing such sound? Well, um, when we received the song, the, the, the written song or the, the demo song, so to speak, from Frederick, it's uh, computer drums. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 on that track, just to to illustrate, you know how how the the song should sound or somewhat should sound like, mm -hmm. and then Man is, is uh, like doing his own thing mm -hmm. uh, with that mind, uh, and uh, and I try to to follow Money on on uh, on stuff, especially since we're only three people. So in life situations, we need to. Uh, change things up a little bit uh, so I don't uh, I don't play exactly uh, as I do in studio albums mm -hmm. when we play live because mm -hmm. we need to uh, I need to play some things that that the second guitar player are playing and and especially on choruses and stuff and you know uh, during solos and stuff I need to play chords and uh, to make it uh, uh, fill the void the, the missing guitar player um, but uh, Working with with the the drummer is something we uh, we've been talking about, looking even more into because that's very important, especially when you're you're three people. Mm -hmm. uh, if, you're, if you're good at working with a drummer as a bass player, uh, uh, you will uh, you will get a greater flow, a better sounding song, uh, both in the studio album and, and live as well, because I think it's very important. Absolutely. We're going to look into it. Yeah. Absolutely. And because, you know, because of the rhythm section being very solid and uh, full uh, sound in, in a way, you know, by itself, that does give an opportunity to a lead guitar player, because, I mean, you, you have one guitarist, uh, right, to experiment and go ahead and express himself in solos, you know, without worrying that the rhythm section is going to fall through. Because, again, again this, is, this is extremely important and... Uh, this is what makes an album and a you know a coherent piece in my personal opinion 
Yeah. But do you actually have yourself a favorite song from this album? Or is like choosing a favorite kid an impossible question? <laughs> uh, well, actually, that usually comes a little bit later because you need to perform the songs live mm -hmm. to, to get a real feeling for the songs. So now we've been rehearsing the songs, but that, that's not the same uh, as playing them live. So Absolutely. then I'll probably get a favorite track, but I do like playing Pestilence. Mm -hmm. I, lo I love that song and I love Fast Trash. And uh, I think it's a great, uh, great song. Uh, so I like that one, but I also like other stuff uh, as well. And you, and you need to, to have the dynamics. You need to have the, the mid-tempo songs as well as the fast songs. And it's good to play fast, but uh, when you play live, you also need to, to mix that up with mid-tempo songs uh, and slower songs to get the heavy stuff mm -hmm. and, you know, people to bang their heads as well, <laughs> which you can't do enough really fast. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, just speaking about that makes uh, me realize how much I miss live concerts and banging my head, you know, and drinking beer in a real concert environment and not in front of a TV. Uh, let's just pray that we yeah. all will be able to do that and enjoy that again soon. Uh, I'm conscious of your time, Chris. Uh, so just a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Uh, the, the first one, you mentioned that you you are a fan of you know uh, late night late eighties uh, thrash metal and some uh, black metal as well, right? So can you actually yep. same uh, name some of the bands or uh, you know particular artists who have been you know the greatest influence for you and whom you really look up to to this day and uh, you know and enjoy listening to? So. A big influence to us is, is Sepultura, mm -hmm. uh, the old, uh, and uh, obviously Slayer. We, mm -hmm. we, it sounds boring to say it, but I need to say it because it's true. <laughs> I get it. Uh, I'm one of those guys. I'm not an elitist in a way uh, because I mean there is a reason why bands are so popular, and it, usually it's because I mean they're good. <laughs> I mean so yeah, name and Slayer. It's, it's clearly true yeah. because they are the thrash metal mastodons. Yeah, absolutely. But we're we're also into the the German uh, thrash scene. So mm -hmm. so Sodom is is. Sodom, uh, yeah. We we look up to Sodom as well. Yeah. Sodom. Uh, I do listen a lot of to to Creator. Yeah. Uh, Destruction. Yeah, and Exodus, obviously. So all those classic thrash bands that they they are inspirations, but. Uh, not only uh, thrash metal uh, inspirations, because we also, like when I grew up, I listened a lot to Megadeth, mm -hmm. like Rust in Peace, Era, Dells, Killing My Business. Uh, that stuff also inspires us, uh, both lyric wise and uh, music wise. So, so I think Megadeth is very important to, to all of us in the band <laughs> ah. as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Dave would be proud. <laughs> uh, nice, man. Um, so actually, and uh, you mentioned Turin and, uh, you know, and how you can't wait to play some of the songs live and uh, uh, have to experience that. This is a segment we usually do, uh, you know, uh, by the end of the episode, and I would love to hear what you have to say about it. Uh, do you have personally one crazy ass Turin uh, story or one show that you absolutely love and cherish i mean just one experience that you you know still remember and uh, want to share with the fans and uh, subscribers that would be great well uh, uh talking about live experiences uh, for us and me personally at least and i think for the other guys as well uh, we felt very strongly uh, playing the the Barcelos Fest in uh, Portugal. That was a great moment for us. Um, it was a great festival. Uh, it was a great show and uh, great people. And uh, everything was, was was very good with that uh, Lich King tour uh, we did in in 2017. Mm -hmm. So, so that. That uh, specific uh, festival is a special moment for for us. I think, yeah. It's pretty cool. Nice. Thanks a lot, man. Uh, so, Chris, again, thanks for joining me. Uh, any last message for the fans? Anything you want to share with them? Your time. <laughs> well, I think people who are new to us should should definitely check out the uh, the two new uh, videos, Pestilence yeah. and Left to Rot. 
uh, to get a picture of who we are and what we sound like. And I think those two tracks are a good representation of uh, War Effect and also the, the Spectre of Devastation album, which is going to be released on November the 13th. So yeah, she came out. Absolutely, absolutely. Just again, a reminder, uh, Spectre of Devastation uh, by uh, War Effect will be released on November 13th via Napalm Records. It is a very strong and powerful thrash metal album, so you make sure to check it out. Chris, thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it, and good luck on the release date, man. See ya. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. See you. Thanks, Chris. Cheers.